Well, we're going to go take a look at a 1969 Volkswagen Fastback. Not too different than my 1968 Fastback. It's uh, kind of in the neighborhood, not too awfully far away from me. And I passed it a couple times and saw it, and then I realized later on it was actually on a very popular for sale website. And uh, well, I'm not advertising for them, so I'm not going to say their name. But anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to go head around the corner here and uh, go have a look at this car. And once we get it there, we'll give you a few pointers as to what you're supposed to look for when buying an air-cooled Volkswagen. Stick around. Oh. There she is. A little bit of patina. Looking pretty cool. There, it's been lowered. It's an IRS, of course, first year for IRS in 1969. Got some low profile tires up front, which helps tremendously when you lower these things because tires rub. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Looks like we got a dryer vent for an air scoop. Okay. You can hook your dryer right up to it. This, patch. this is William. You've seen him in some of my past videos before. He helped me to take apart Eleanor when she first came home. <laughs> so where's your buddy? I thought he was coming. No, yeah, he has work. So are we supposed to be touching this thing? Or is the guy around for this going to see us or what? No, he's not going to see us. He told you to do whatever you want? No, we need to come up here and look at it. You've been what? We came up here earlier. Yeah? Then we here. Well, it's open. Well, on a Type 3, one of the first things you need to look for is going to be rust at the bottoms of the fenders. Usually they rust right in the corners. Fenders are pretty easy to replace. They're not like Carmen Gears where they're welded on solid, but they do rust in the bottoms. Uh, you also find rust up around the bumper area in the front here. This one's got it. You can see it down below in there. Also around the headlights, they tend to rust and looks like we got a little buckshot under there. That's what happens to them. Lower corner, right there in the body. That's your heater channel area. Another rusty spot, very common. And why do I keep having gnats going in my ears? <laughs> you check these doors. You grab the door and lift it. And this door is not bouncing up and down, which tells me that the A-pillar is still attached to the body because they tend to crack down there at the bottom. More so on Beetles and Carmen Ghias than Type 3s, but Type 3s do it also. Of course, you want to lift up the carpets. Look at the floors. This is, uh, it's rusty. It's not a disaster, but it is rusty. There's your battery back there underneath the passenger seat in the rear. Got a nice patinaed roof. Nicely patinaed roof. The rear valence on these guys usually rust too, and you can see that. Also the bumper. Okay. The trick to open the hood, which is in the front, Mr. William, is up box. underneath here. It's in the glove box, man. That is in the glove box? Okay, starting in 69 then. <laughs> They're in the glove box. <laughs> and I believe that's the same on Beetles too. 68 also had a finger open flapper and it was one year only. 69 they started with that pull release over here. Aha, uh -huh. look at that. Uh. Yeah. That still has some carpet in it. Places where water usually collects, which is right around in here, is usually where you'll find some rust. Now, I see lights in here. That's kind of cool. That is extremely convenient. I thought I was catching a glare, but now that's actually lights in the trunk. Top of the gas tank's a little rusty, but no holes in it. Got a little roach running around in there. Welcome to Florida. A little rust around this area, which is usually very common too. 
and it tends to rust up and around the rain gutter it goes around the hood this one doesn't look too bad spare tire area usually can catch some rust too type threes aren't as bad because they usually have a place where the water can get out which is this little cover that goes in here and actually looks like the covers rusted not so much the body it still has the foam pad how about that I've never seen one <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen the phone pad. That's awesome. I buy the car just for that. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to open up the rear trunk or the deck lid. Brake fluid's filled up, which is a pretty good sign that the, the brakes aren't leaking. Ooh, that moves nice and smoothly. Actually, even better than mine. All right, take this door lift nope it's also solid the door doesn't flop around check up around the pedal area for rust in the floor and it still has the original tarboard on it no somebody has repaneled this there's a piece of steel right here that's over it feels like it's over the tarboards which is then over the floor underneath so it's definitely been fixed I'm not going to say repaired properly, but it's got fixes done to it. Got some spare parts. Mr. William was having trouble opening. Try lifting it, shaking it. There it is. See? All right. We got the wrong engine in. It's a Type 1. <sighs> the difference between Type 1 and Type 3 engines is actually uh, minor. It's all the accessories are different. The case is actually nearly identical. The difference is the dipstick is mounted differently. The exhaust is different. In fact, looking at this, you have, uh, these are type three exhausts on here right now. Yeah, that's actually a type three exhaust. You see how big and long the pipes are on it. Yeah, the dipstick will be different on it, how that mounts. The uh, oil filler is also different on a type three engine. Some type three engines are blocked. And also on the type threes, usually is a mustache bar. This one is missing it. In fact, I'm rather curious how the engine's even staying in there without it. That's supposed to be your rear support. I don't think they have a mid-engine support, so somebody must have put one in. But I can see where the mustache bar attaches right down there, where it's supposed to be. So, whoever gets this, I would advise that you put that in. Otherwise, you might wind up fatiguing the rear end pretty badly. This stuff usually tends to rust through and it looks like somebody's covered it with something. Yeah, they, you see it's flexing? Yeah, this is actually flexing pretty badly, so there's actually no metal right here. This is gone. I don't know what that is. It feels like, like tar paper or something from a roof. <laughs> license plates for patches or whatever. Where are you looking? Oh, I see it. It's been painted over. And the rear trunk's got some pretty severe rust on the inside there. You can see it in the back. I think you should chew the price down on this a little bit more. It's got an awful lot of rust. Awful lot of rust. Really cool patina, though. And I mean, if it runs well, it's going to be a good ride. But you're going to have to do something about the cooling. Because when you close this deck lid, there's no way for cool air to get in. Instead, it pulls hot air up from the bottom. So it will overheat your engine. I can guarantee that. And at the very, very least, I would take a, a large pipe or tubing of some sort, big pipe that fits over the fan, and route it somehow to the, the gills on the side. You know, if you come up through here or something. I mean, it's hacky, but that'll work. Or just buy the right Type 3 cooling stuff and bolt it on. <laughs> but I think it would be a really cool ride otherwise, and that's the first time I've actually seen in person a Type 1 engine inside of a Type 3. Yeah, it definitely needs help, but uh, it's your buddy's first Volkswagen? No, it's second. Second? Had a Beetle before. He had a Beetle before? Okay, so he's got the basics down then. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows the gist of it. Yeah, this is a pretty cool ride. I mean, I would certainly be interested, but uh, like I said, you got to talk the price down a little bit. I think it's a little bit high for what he's asking because I paid less for mine than what he was asking for this, and mine didn't have these problems. It also had the right engine in it. And you said there's some type of titling paperwork problem too or something, but the guy's a dealer and he can get the paperwork for you? Yeah. That helps. That helps. But I mean, you know, without the paperwork, no deal.
See down there we got that rusty spot also. Very common on all air-cooled Volkswagens, the rust right there in the bottom. Water just has a tendency to sit. I'd like to look underneath the battery, so I think what we'll do is we'll lay down on the ground here and uh, have a look up underneath. It's a little low, and we're starting to lose daylight, so we may not see it too well. But let's see what we got. Okay, that is patchwork. Yeah, this whole floor is all patchwork. Yeah, the floors are uh, definitely going to either need to be serviced or repaired. Or if he's just going to ride it for a little while, go with it for the time being. But uh, it, it definitely needs some love. What really upsets me, though, is to see the gills cut out of it. Amen. The good thing about Type 3 fenders is you just unbolt them. So, I mean, you can find another fender and just fix it. Or you can find a crashed one and just replace the section of gills and weld it in. Of course, I could help you with that. I like the way he kept the uh, roof rack on here. Custom. He <laughs> drilled it right through. <laughs> what do they call those? Uh, it has a name. A to No, not a toggle. Mmm. Kind of like the tie rods that I was adjusting. The, the more you turn it, the bigger or smaller they get. Yeah. yeah too. Turnbuckle. That's what it is. It's a turnbuckle. Turnbuckle. You know, I just realized that's a completely custom roof rack. It's made from rebar. That's really cool. It's just it touches the roof in the middle. It's actually dented the roof in the middle. <laughs> I wonder if it's even meant for a Type 3. It might have been built for a different car. Well, I like it, but I think you're going to need a better price on it. And we need to see it run. I mean, it runs, but... Have you seen it run? Yeah, I drove it. It's hard to Oh, drive. you did drive it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's really hard to drive. I When'd you do that? Earlier today. Oh, okay, so you came back earlier. Mm -hmm. Why do you tell me? I mean, you are busy doing your thing. I tried to tell you. It was home. But you were busy. <laughs> I tried to tell you. A couple hours ago? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. I called you. You should have just stopped by and at least looked at what I was working on in the driveway there, man. You could have. said you had to drool over photos. <laughs> yeah, I think this is cool. I mean, this is definitely cool. The doors open and close nice. I mean, that's a big issue right there. Big issue, and they they actually work quite well. And as I was telling you, this thing belongs to a lot of different friends. Um, it's got quite a history. It's been around for a while. It lived out in Mississippi for a while. Another common rust area is the corners of the windows. All windows, except for the door windows. But, yep, it's got one here, too. Rested right through. So yeah, it's gonna need uh, it's gonna need work. But if he wants to keep it as a patinaed car, I say just go with it. You know, just start throwing some phosphoric acid in some of the holes, and then just start siliconing some shit closed. What you think on price? I'm gonna bleep it out because I'm not gonna tell everybody in the world about what I'm thinking. But I'm saying, yeah. yep, and go no higher than that's only if you get the, the paperwork. That's as high as I would go. But, it was but I wouldn't start there. I would start lower than that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you can get it for... That would be the highest that I would go. But yeah. paperwork's the key. You gotta get the paperwork. I looked underneath it, and uh -huh. didn't raise any flags because I've seen Type 1s so many times. Uh -huh. Pancakes. Yep. And it's just... I was thinking about that. I saw a carburetor, a generator, maybe a fan channel. Yeah, it's got the wrong... Uh, all the wrong cooling tin on it. Somebody told me that, actually. One of the guys in Mississippi that used to own it knew that. And I remember hearing that. I think I just mentioned to you last night when you were asking about the car. Yeah. I was trying to find the old thread where we were talking about it, but I couldn't find it on, on Facebook. Because we were actually going on about it for, uh, well, probably about a, a couple dozen different messages. So there's, there's a history behind this car. Yeah, the guy had mentioned it earlier, like someone owned it in Mississippi, let it sit for like four years. Mm-hmm. Still, I like the baked-on um, patina that it's got. Yeah, it's got a, a nice baked-on patina. You know, it's not all flaky and shitty where it gets all over you either. It's uh, it looks sharp. I mean, it runs okay. It's strong. It's just hard to drive on kind of the shifter. Shifter. Kind of... Yeah. Oh, that's something else you want to look at. Want to look at the pedals, and you can see how they are falling to the floor. Some people call that falling forward, but they're actually falling back. Seats are really hard, but that's just a matter of maladjustment. Matter of fact, you know what? You got a problem with the brakes too. 
I don't feel the rear. Yeah, there's no rear right now. I only got the front brakes. So if we push the brake up, it doesn't do anything? Now, your brake's working, but your hydraulic is not. That feels good. My right, gauges are much easier to read than mine are. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you hear that? I hear the fluid coming out. Yeah, it's squirting on the floor. Yeah, it's something else to check is the brake, and almost always. And my fastback had exactly the same problem, except my pedals were so messed up by the adjustment nut that was behind it that they fell and hit the floor. So I actually had to get my foot under it and get in the position and then stomp on it and hope it stopped. And the fronts would lock up and it would just plow through. <laughs> so do you think the brake line is busted? Or? Yeah, I think the rear brake line is busted. When I step on that pedal, I hear squirting. So remember I thought I said the master cylinder uh, reservoir looked like it was full? Mm. Let's actually look down inside of it. I bet you the one chamber is actually empty. All right, let's look down inside the master cylinder reservoir here. Yeah, the rear chamber is actually nearly dry. There's a little bit of fluid in the back there. Front one has fluid, back hardly has any. Really? Yeah, so it's, it's got a busted line. I didn't know type these had like this in the front. Yes, they all did. Hmm. And they have extra big drums in the back. Those are 69. Um, yeah, 68, 68 did too. I think they all had super wide drums in the back. They did that on account that it weighed more. All those stick and disc brakes came in the same way. Uh, disc brakes... I thought it was... They all had... Well, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I don't remember what the first year was for disc brakes on the Type 3. I'm gonna have to look that up. But I do know they have extra big drums in the back. Of course, 68 uh, was the first year for four lug. Mm -hmm. So this is 69. 69 is the last year for the early body style, but the first year for IRS. So if I were in the market for a Type 3 again, I would go for a 69 if I could find one. So, I mean, this is the best of both worlds. You get a car that looks and drives nice. <laughs> it's got a goofy engine. And... Yeah, it's got the wrong cooling tin on it. Definitely got the wrong cooling tin. Still a cool car. I mean, that's stuff that can all be fixed, you know. You just got to get the right stuff. Hell, you might even find it at the next car show. What, pancake? Or yeah. Cooling tin? Yeah. There's not a whole lot of Type 3s out there, so either the people really, really want them or they walk past them, you know, because they don't need them. So you you certainly might find what you're looking for to uh, convert this back to where it used to be. Do you think retrofitting this to work properly would be a viable option? Or? Yeah, if you get a big enough tubing and run it off to one of the air ducts, you have to cut a hole in the panel over here, and then you have to run that tubing out the back. and. It's got to be really thick, heavy, durable stuff because, you know, the, the fans suck so much air. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever put your hand in front of one and revved it up. Well, the one time I did that by mistake, it pulled my hand in the fan. Yeah, and I pulled it away barely in time. <laughs> and I would have eaten my knuckles right off. Yeah, it's got some teeth. Yeah, it would have certainly chewed the shit out of me. And I mean, all I did was just wave my hand in front of it as I revved it up, and it sucked me right in. Yeah, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I counted my fingers after that. <laughs> And it's still got the low-mounted license plate, too. That was something that they ended sometime after the body swap. I think when they switched it in 70, the license plate actually got mounted up higher. This was up here, and the plate was on the lid instead of down below. Just realized the lights came on under the dashboard, too. LED lighting is a nice touch. You know what? Man... Man, man, flip that seat up for me. I want to look at the battery from the top down. Do not know how to do that. What, really? All right. All right, down underneath the battery here under the back seat, I decided to look down. There's a bunch of tar paper and stuff down there, and it's wet. So I didn't think it was a good idea to touch it, so I'm not going to because I don't need it on my hands because I'm not very close to running water right now. <laughs> so we're going to leave that alone. But uh, we could tell from underside the car that it had been repaired, so it's certainly not... Certainly not original, I just wanted to see how bad it was from the inside. Ow. Now we gotta put that seat back in. Missing some vent window knobs. It's missing a lot. Did the windows roll up and down? This one does, that one does, but it's different. 
Yeah, they're both stiff. <laughs> if that's the case. That one's much more stiff. See the window scrapers are gone, and what happens is the rain gets in the uh, regulator and makes it stiff. Happened on the fastback too. One day I got caught in the rain, and uh, the rain actually loosened up the rust, and the windows would work really good. <laughs> and by the next day, when it dried out, they were worse. Oh uh, yeah. In fact, the crank is shot on that one too. But this one has a closing vent window, which is good. My passenger side one's messed up too. It's kind of funny. Let's try that again. Yay. So yeah, man. It's doable for the right price. I mean, Needs love though. Technically does run and drive. That matters. All right. Coming at you for Pensacola. 1969 Volkswagen Fastback. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're interested in the car, let me know. I'll try to get you in touch with the owner. Otherwise, William here is going to take it home. No? He says no. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. As I said before, check out my other channels, View the Duck VV, as well as Skeeter the Duck. Make sure you subscribe to them. Check out the Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles VW Garage. Join that group. We'll talk about projects such as this one, as well as some others, and anything else anybody else wants to share. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.